Welcome to the One Big Thing Podcast, where inspiration meets transformation. How do you make something compelling? You find it, you want it to have differentiation in the market. And so one of the ways I think you can best differentiate someone, something, is when you know it at an incredibly intimate level and you know it better than anybody else. And you can go to bat for it and you can dig in and you can listen, but also direct somebody if they're disagreeing. And I think that relationship with something can provide so much strength. And so if you're lucky enough to be your own best customer of something you create, I think you're going to have tons of success navigating that. If you think enough about it and really, you know, take a look at the fundamentals of, of why you're having certain kinds of conversations, but also at a personal level, like how do you want to show up as a dad? How do you want to show up when you walk into a room? What do you want people to think? How do you want to be perceived? How does your personal brand come off? And what are the kinds of things you need to do to reflect that change or that uh, experience in others in the way that they take a look at you? Well, welcome into the One Big Thing Podcast. I am your host, Steve Campbell. Very excited about this conversation today. Uh, Something that I'm very passionate about if you've been trekking with me for a while, which is my own health. Uh, Today's guest is going to be Charlie Hale. He is the CEO and co-founder of Shred Labs, uh, an app that I have used for over the last year to transform my body, to help me curate workouts. And I'm super excited to get into his story, how he developed Shred Labs, where it's come, where it's evolved, but he has also served as a founder of a health and wellness digital company. He's been an investor, he's an influencer. So this is going to be a great conversation today. If you're looking to hear from somebody who has, you know, some skin in the game, they've developed some things and it's really helping other people. And I, as your host, uh, I'm a dad, I'm a father to four young kids. So I'm right in the thick of many of my listeners, but I also serve as the chief brand officer at the company that I work for. So understanding marketing, advertising, public image is very important to me, how you stand out in the marketplace. So with the one big thing, I always bring to you, I think, what I think are people influencing society today and culture, and Charlie is no different. So Charlie, for those that are new to The One Big Thing, following your journey, welcome. Uh, This is an interview-style show where I have people like Charlie from all walks of life, people that have been the NFL, Peloton, influencers, CEOs, people that are shaking stuff up. So Charlie... Uh, was willing enough to come on because I told him about my experience with what he's developed through Shred Labs, and we want to talk about it today. So, Charlie, for those that don't know you, uh, is there anything in this introduction that we didn't cover that you think would be really good to go over at the forefront of the conversation today? No, you know, I think you covered it nicely. You stayed high level, which is always fun. And I just feel like one thing to throw into the mix that will come up more is I'm an ever- Uh, I'm an athlete through and through. And so from the early years of my life, still to this day, I treat everything that I do with the approach of an athlete. And I think it comes through in the way that I operate, the way that I try to lead and the way that I I see the world. And so I think it'll come up more in our story here, but that's the only thing I would throw in. Yeah. And we got a lot to unpack. Uh, I think this will be a great conversation for you. One thing that I noticed, because I do a little bit of due diligence on my guests, one thing that you had in a profile is that you love to build and you love to invest and you love to grow things. And I would say that as the host of your show, I am in the same way. I want to leave things better than how I found them. If something isn't working, if there's a part of my life, like in a podcast that I feel like, man, we can inspire and encourage people I'm all about bringing you as a listener real resources that can help you move the ball forward. And I think what Charlie and I, if you're willing to stick with us, what we're going to get into today could completely revolutionize and change your life because I know it has for me personally, and that is the development of Shred Labs. So Charlie, for those that aren't familiar with Shred, why don't you give us kind of the brief history of what it is and kind of how we got to where we are today? Absolutely. So Shred is like an elite digital personal trainer in your pocket. What's great about Shred is you can sign up, answer a series of questions, and it it will create a exercise program that's tailored just for you. Why people love Shred is because whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or you're an advanced pro athlete or trainer, we meet you where you are. And that's something we talk about all the time is how do we meet people where they are in their fitness journey? And you know, I think one of the most important things about what we do and what problem we attack was this problem that people often face in in the world of exercise, which is plateauing. And that's if you do the same thing without the right motivation, 
becomes uh, an issue and you start losing out on on potential gain. And so we developed from both a content experience, uh, standpoint and a software experience standpoint, how to mitigate plateauing and how to have people stay on their uh, fitness journey that they want to continue on and really see results. But at the end of the day, that's the goal, helping people see results. And so that's a big part of why people love Shred and why we built it uh, in the beginning. Yeah. You know, I think the common thread that you and I have is we both grew up playing sports. Um, You know, I worked hard my entire life being a three sport athlete, was able to earn a division one scholarship to play lacrosse at Rutgers University. Uh, But in my senior year of high school, my last high school football game ended up actually blowing out my ACL and that forever changed the trajectory of my sports career. The one amazing thing, though, about about playing sports in the NCAA level is usually the facilities and the trainers are preparing you because your body is your tool. And so I did everything from organized weightlifting, uh, post-college, got into things like P90X. I really valued community. I valued consistency. But like you had said, I think I also valued the change up in a workout and doing things differently. And I think what's hard for a lot of us is as you get married, your life takes a shift. Your identity shifts is now you're doing life with another person. As you have kids, one, two, however many, or in my life, four, that's a new identity and season of your life where you're trying to navigate you know, the various moving pieces to how to be the best self that you can be. And I think for a lot of us as parents, we are uh, in a position where we know our responsibility is taking care of those that are dependent upon us, but many times it is at the detriment to our own well-being. And so that's why I'm extremely passionate about bringing resources to listeners that can help them with the two big areas that I think most people would identify as like, I want to do the right things. And that has to do with their money or their finances not saying that everyone wants to be as wealthy as they can be, but they just want to make sure with whatever they're stewarding them and their spouse or them as an individual, that boy, they're doing the right things with their money. So they'll seek out podcasts. The other area I would say is health. And I think what's hard is that there's so many things that are out there today that are constantly trying to grab our attention as consumers, whether that's the quick fix vitamin, whether that's the way of eating, there's things like keto, there's paleo, there's carnivore. And I think there's a lot of people that are just like, man, I wish I just had an easy blueprint that could kind of help streamline this process. And so I will tell you that I was that person that you described, grew up as an athlete, was in the gym. Uh, was was training the way that I kind of knew how to train and it was becoming kind of stale. And I have a dear friend of mine from church uh, who is built like a house in watching him work out in the gym. And I was like, Jody, what what do you do in the gym every day? Like, like help me understand. And all of a sudden he was telling me that he found this app called Shred. And he said, hey, you could try it out for a week for free. And I had seen people use kind of these curated AI type softwares on their phone. And I was like, dude, I don't, I don't think I could really follow a workout on my phone. But I tried it for a week and I was absolutely hooked. And so I think what you've been able to do, and I want to give you more space to kind of talk about the genesis of Shred and where it came from, but to talk to us about you were an athlete. What was there a need? What was it that you saw? And then talk to us about like, how did Shred develop from kind of where it is to where it is today? Yeah, Steve, we share um, a common uh, upbringing in this context. I also, I had six knee surgeries. I've had one shoulder surgery and a handful of decent sized concussions. And so I developed a pretty uh, uh, intimate relationship with strength training and both Uh, impact, trying to brace for impact in terms of collisions and things like that. And then also how to recover and how to build up a body that is ready to kind of take on the world in the way that I was moving through it as an athlete. Um, You know, we built Shred mainly to address the fact that we didn't felt like the right content was out there. As you were saying, as a former college athlete, we are prescribed training regimens and we follow along and we see the results and it's really nice. You get, you get fantastic uh, facilities, you get the right care. It's all in place for you. And as I graduated, I sort of looked to my left and looked to my right and just couldn't find that level of programming. And once you spend enough time in the gym or enough time training with people that really know what they're doing, you start to understand what is good and what is just okay. And then what is bad, what is not useful. Yeah. And uh, a, a, a former business uh, partner of mine, we found one of the best trainers in LA. We loved him because of his tenacity, his intensity, and coupled with our experience with software, we set out on this venture to really address 
our own need, which is that we felt like there wasn't a product for us. And it's a big part of how I like to see the entrepreneurial side of the world, which is you need to be your, your own best customer and you need to sort of show up for yourself in that way. And so Shred was born out of, out of pure need and necessity. We, I was looping through the same three-week Greg Plitt training program that I found, I think, on bodybuilder.com. And I was so bored. I was plateauing. And I was just missing that sense of competitiveness and sort of social interaction. And so Shred, we, we, we positioned it as sort of elite programming and finding the right workout and strength training program for you, but also a fun social component. So you could cheer each other on. You get a push notification when your friends start working out. And we sat back and asked ourselves, you know, what's, what's more fun and motivating? Uh, a, a machine telling you to get your butt moving or your friend Steve to, telling you to get your butt moving. And so we played a lot with these social dynamics in a way that we found were hugely beneficial for people. And so good content, good design, and a community component to it really drove the, the first few iterations of Shred. And the other thing that we did was that we made it for the first full year, you could only get access to it if you already knew somebody using it. And so that gave us a special relationship with those early customers. I was working at a different company. This was a, a side hustle, if you will, but a very serious side hustle, as, especially as it began to develop more. And this relationship with our customer base has never left us. I still, there's been periods where it's been a bit extreme, but the, the, the CEO of the company has always managed the bulk of the customer support. We, I want to know what is the, the feeling of our customer and how do we respond to that thoughtfully. And so I think between the initial way that we set out coupled with our iterative approach and nonstop conversation we try to have with our, our customers, we've continued to develop one of the most impactful and robust products on the market. Yeah. For those of us that have never, you know, built an app or a widget or something like you did with Shred, I mean, what is that timeline like behind the scenes from a concept to, you know, a trial basis? I mean, how long from start to finish to you had that first iteration how long was that time period and like how many versions did you have to go to before you were able to bring something to market? It's a great question. You know, I, previous to Shred, I had built, I had worked with a large team of physicians taking their 500 page manuscript and turning it into an exercise, nutrition and sleep platform mm -hmm. that had a, that had a fitness component. It wasn't at the level of Shred, but there was a fam familiarity with how to bring that part to life. And and the biggest, a big issue when you're building a company for the first time are what don't you know? You know, what, what right. do you not know to even ask a question about? And so I think sometimes if you can learn on somebody else's dime or develop a skill set and a perspective while you're doing something else, that can be a really great way to form a stronger opinion when you do go two feet into something. And, and sometimes you, you still learn while you're flying the plane, and that's an important skill set. But there was an enough of an awareness, I think, going into building the product that we knew uh, a lot of what we wanted to do. From there, though, you know, I would say it took about a year and a half to really go from idea through deep throw design process and then through that full, let's call it, uh, year and change through a beta process where we spent time with our customers taking in feedback. And so I would to answer your question about a year and a half, but there was definitely different chapters within that and um, a, a great push and pull between customer feedback and just some bold decision making that we felt passionately about that should be in the product on day one. Yeah, and I think it's neat that in your story, right, we've uncovered that you had a little bit of an experience or I should say a lot of experience being in digital health and the role that you did as a founder before. And I think what's so big is uh, if, again, you're new to the one big thing, a lot of our listeners are in their probably late 20s, but mostly 30s and 40s. Um, they want to be inspired. Um, they don't want to just hear from the most successful people that seem at arm's length so far away from them. Like, that's a great story, but I'm never going to be a billionaire. They want to hear from people that are in the thick of it, just like them, 
uh, that are willing to share the high water marks, but also those really low points of their life and just talk about the life lessons that they've learned in between. In the role of an entrepreneur, um, because I've experienced this within my business uh, with the people I work with, um, just just the iterations and the involving. And you know, you look back to again, I do you know marketing and branding and advertising. The things that I created, you know, back in 2016, 17, if I look back on now, you'd laugh. But in the moment, like you thought you were literally making the greatest thing that you could possibly make, but you learn and you develop. And the line that you just said, I use all the time with people. Sometimes you're just fixing the plane that you're flying simultaneously. There isn't always a blueprint. And I think especially when you're a visionary, maybe like yourself, you recognize a need in society that there wasn't anything to your right or your left, as you said, that could that could suffice and meet that need of unplateauing and staying healthy when there isn't a blueprint for what you're trying to build. Um, no one would ever blame you if you threw the towel in after the first few versions didn't work. And I don't know if you experienced this along the way. Did you, as you were building shred conceptually, did you tell people that you were really close with what you were doing or was this something you more kept to yourself? Because I think I think a lot of us are trying to navigate, like, how much should I share about the things that I'm working on with people that are close to me? And how much should I just kind of keep to myself in case it doesn't work? What was that experience like with those around you in your network as you were building Shred? And, you know, was there, was there anything that you kind of learned in that process that you couldn't have seen in, at the beginning? Yeah, I'm going to give you two answers because I, and this may be a, a cop out, but let's see how this goes. I think that there is room for, from a personal brand standpoint, to be cautious around not shooting too many sure. things at once. So if you're sort of yep. rapid firing, hey, I'm doing this, hey, I'm doing that, I think you can do a disservice to your maybe overall personal brand. Yep. But I want to move that to the side because I, I think. There's a Paul Graham quote, focus on getting 100 people to love you, not 1,000 people to like you, and scale the love. And I always think that that's such an important way to look at starting something new. And sometimes and often, the people closest to you are going to be your biggest supporters and are going to be the ones cheering loudest from the sidelines when it matters most, and that's on day zero. And so I think if there's a thoughtful balance between not shooting too many things at once, but staying focused on leaning into the people around you and leveraging them for feedback and, and listening to them, you know, le- using that empathy and, and listening and, and learning. I think then it, it does make sense to share uh, when you do feel like there's some heat around something or you're trying to, to you know, uh, qualitatively and analyze whether something's directionally right. There's, there's lots of reasons to do it. The other thing that I would throw out there is you can veil what you're trying to get at through just casual questions. And I'll, I'll give you a, an example. I spent a lot of time with BJ Fogg, who at the time, many years ago, was the head of the behavioral design lab at Stanford. And he has this um, uh, equation that he calls B equals MAT. And what is that? Well, behavior happens when three things occur at the same time, motivation, ability, and a trigger. So for a behavior to happen, people need to be motivated to do it. They have to want to do it. Ability, they have to be able to do it. So whether how that's designed, how they get to the thing. And then the trigger, email, push notification, pat on the back from a friend. Triggers can be lots of different things. And so I think in conversations with friends and family, it may be a little less around talking about the thing and more about the behaviors and asking them about behaviors in terms of how it impacts the thing you may be thinking about. And mapping that, oh, interesting, They that perspective does lend itself to the problem that I'm trying to solve. Now, let me maybe go a question or two deeper. So those are my two answers for you. And I also just want to call out that BJ Fogg is excellent. I think he has a book called uh, Tiny Habits that I recommend for others to take a peek at. But also, I try to look at the creation of anything through this lens of B equals MAT. And how do you meet people where they are and take behavior and move it in a direction that they would like it to go to. And then there's some, some self-analysis that you can do there as well. Let's take a quick break to hear a word from your sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Seed Planning Group. If you're looking for a life-giving experience working with a financial planner, then Seed is here for you. Seed is a fee-only financial planning firm 
with a fiduciary obligation to put your best interests first. If your goal is financial freedom and independence without sales, products, or really glorified salespeople, then check out Seed Planning Group today. You can visit www.seedpg.com. That's www.seedpg.com. And the best part, you can schedule a free consultation to find out if their fee-only planners and their process are right for you. Yeah, I love that equation. And I, and I wonder if this has been your experience too. I think when you have a passion for something and a vision for something, um, it's easy to become so blinded to that vision that you can miss the interruptions that can happen along the way that no one could ever prepare you for, but can sometimes be the greatest area of breakthrough that you could have never seen. Like obviously when you're building an app, you want to have strategic meetings with people that can help open doors for you and sounding boards. But I've also found that in my life, sometimes it's it's just the unforeseen get together. It's somebody you ran into. It's the casual conversation. It's the conversation at the ball field. And whether you're a curious person like I am, I am typically, it's probably why I host a podcast asking questions. I love asking questions. I, I think people are absolutely fascinating at their core. And if you ever see me at a, at a party or a cookout, when we leave, people will be like, man, how do you know everybody here? And coming into that party, I'm like, I didn't know anybody. But just, you know, I'm the kind of guy who's like, hey, like, are you from around here? And all of a sudden, I'll talk to somebody for 45 minutes and there's people gathering. So I think just having a level of curiosity, you know, no matter how far you go, can be an open door. So I don't know if that was any of your experience as you went through Shred, but just, you know, was there anything that like you didn't see coming that was like, man, I'm glad I had that conversation or I took that moment to engage a little longer? First, I just want to agree with what you said. I'm also somebody that likes to find my way around a party and try to say hello to as, as many people as I can. And I think people who are, we all have some shyness inside of us, but people want to talk. They want to share yeah. their story. Everybody's the main character of their own story. And so I try to, you know, come into a social situation like that and, and authentically find ways to engage with people. So I just want to echo what you're saying. I, I would encourage people to talk more. Um, I think more than ever, we need to talk more about how we're feeling, what we're thinking, and and bouncing ideas of, off of each other. It's It's hugely important. To answer your question, you know, I think I try to have, as I just referenced, as many conversations as I can. So there's not necessarily one that was more impactful than another. But what I do do is I try to ask thoughtful questions, not lead somebody in a direction that I may not want to position them into, and then mm -hmm. map that across my informational uh, digestion and start to make decisions from there. And so uh, w w you'll, you'll, you'll seldom find me making a quick gut reaction. I need to talk to people. I need to sort of frame up the issue. And I think it's imp I've seen people make decisions too quick and too, and they're too reactionary and they let sort of emotion come into uh, yeah. a moment when maybe it's more helpful to talk. And so uh, I do think that's a huge part of, of what I do and, and a big part of why Shred has been successful because it's been, a, it's been years and years of, of listening, iterating, listening and iterating. And uh, also I just think it, it's a, it's a big part of being a good person, you know, well, and I think what I'm excited about is this, you know, first 20 minutes of this show. Um, I know that we are going to be uh, acknowledging this podcast with some of the Shred followers. And so this may be the first time that they've heard from you, right, as the CEO of Shred and the story and the genesis of it. But I think they'll hear Charlie, you know, through the midst of what you just said. And I think it's going to strengthen the ties for them as users because you're a real person. And, you know, I want to give us space to talk about We've talked about kind of shred as an app, but like to really get into how it can transform somebody's life, because I I'm willing to talk about my experience with it and what it's gone through, but really the nuts and bolts. And so you've developed this app that basically takes away the guesswork, male, female, doesn't matter. And what my experience was is that you have the ability with the touch of a few clicks on your phone to basically come into a gym or at home. And basically say like how much time you have to work out today. Sometimes life gets in the way and you only got 30 minutes. Sometimes you have an hour. Sometimes you have a little bit more time. If you got, you know, a rocking kids care center at your gym and you got a full hour and a half. As you basically signify how much time you have, 
shred goes to work. And then within it, I think what I've seen is the beauty of it is the different styles of workouts. And that's what's neat is it's not a vanilla blank slate, like you just do these things. What my experience has been, if I'm in the gym and I say, hey, I have an hour to work out today, it will give me suggestions of muscle groups I can work out. And why that's big is I think there's a lot of individuals out there today that would confess like, I want to be healthier. I want to be my best self. Like I want to live the longest life possible for my spouse and for my kids. You know, there's a lot of people that struggle with food and dieting and self-control. The last thing that they want to do when they have time to themselves is go exert energy at a gym. And I think a lot of times that um, tension is there because they don't know what to do once they get there, whether it's, you know, fear, whether it's shame, whether it's, they feel like people are going to laugh at them that, you know, they walk up to a machine and read the little like how to instructions and they don't want to be that person. What shred will give you the ability to do is kind of mask it. And you have the ability within your phone uh, to say how long you can work out, the style you want to work out, whether you want to get tone or whether you're trying to put on size or more of like a CrossFit hybrid. And as you select these things, it's curating an entire workout for you based on different muscle groups. And so it's, I think, easy for you as the CEO to talk about it, but I'm talking about it as a user because I have probably introduced 10 plus more people at my gym to shred males and females and their experiences have all been the same, but their workouts have all been different. And so it's so neat that you have the ability through timers to tell you how long in between you should work out. You have the ability to record how much weight you lifted. And if there is a workout you've never seen, you've never heard of, there is a little video to show you how to do it. And if you don't know how to do it in the video, then it's written in text. And so you have all these features, but then the amazing thing is that you have this like virtual community that when I'm at the gym in the morning at 5 a.m., I get these little cheers and notifications from other shred users that are on there championing me and supporting me in my workout. And so I understand now after these first 20 minutes, that equation that you talked with and how you influence behavior, because I can see in the functionality of how this app works all of those features coming to life. And so for those, you know, I know I covered a lot as a user for Shred. Is there, a, there's so much more to the app though. If we had you and I, let's say we had a couple minutes here to tell somebody that wants to transform their life, but they don't know where to start. How do we talk about an introduction to Shred, maybe how they can find it, some of the features of it. And let's just kind of paint a picture for how this might actually transform their life. Yeah, well, in terms of how to find it, www.shred.app will give you a high-level overview. And then in the App Store, if you search S-H-R-E-D, Shred, uh, both iOS and Android, we're available uh, across the board. You said something really important that we we take quite seriously. We want you to think less and work out harder. Mm -hmm. You have so much on your plate to think about throughout the day. And we want to be something where you just show up, hit go, and you trust that we're going to take you into the direction you want to go to. It's going to say, bust your butt. Um, and, and if you can just find that, that little kick of motivation, 30, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 90 minutes, we, up the ladder, we have your back. And so, you know, I think it's hugely important that we're able to meet you where you are and work your way up. You also mentioned training styles. And so when you go to our website and you sign up for the product, we ask you these uh, questions to help identify what is the best training path to start you out on. And it depends on a whole host of different factors. You can do more of a CrossFit leaning uh, experience. You can do something more bulking or strengthening. You want to focus on your glute, your booty, you know, whatever that, that area is, we address it. We also will help you focus on areas that you may not know that you should be focusing on. People will come in and say, I just want to work on this. Well, you actually should surround that with a bit more strength and here's why. So we're always trying to provide the context so you understand as a user why we might be telling you to do a certain thing. And then lastly, now that you've signed up, you've, you've been put on your proper training path, you said it, you know, the social part was a huge piece of why Shred is different for me personally. You know, I grew up with coaches saying, you know, winners are, are born in silence. You know, you're training, playing wall ball, whatever your sport was, it was often done alone. And it was in the time off the practice field when nobody mm -hmm. was watching. And 
I don't think it has to be that way with technology. I think there can be people watching. I love a little bit of an audience. And so the fact that you can be at in your home gym garage with nobody around you and you looked up, you look down and you have seven ch- real cheers from people that are working out just like you. I think that gives you an extra bit of mo- motivation to say, you know what? I can get through the next 10 minutes. I can go through the next five. Uh, I can get up again tomorrow and do that. And so there's there's an element to the realism and to the reality we try and bring through connection that you're not alone. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are just like you, headphones on, focused, trying to work through life. And here's a community of like-minded people that are working hard. And um, And if Shred can provide an easier way to meet you where you are from an exercise and fitness perspective, we've done our job. And, you know, the, the last thing I'll say, Steve, is you mentioned focusing on, on money and health. You know, I'm from the school where I think you can't really get the money until you focus on the health. Sometimes it's, it doesn't work out for everybody. But I know for me personally, I had to get my mind in the right place through fitness, exercise, routine, and finding that foundation for me to stand strong on to be the best human I could be. And so, you know, eat, there's days where I get down and do 15 push-ups. And that's what I've got. That's all I can give for the day. There's too much happening. And, um, and so, yeah, l- continually looking at, at, a, at a shred as a way to sort of deliver some of that um, expectation that you can get from a great workout, I think, is something we're, we're always trying to build upon. Yeah. And sometimes I think we are, again, desperate for change that we think that the only solution is to go out and hire a professional that knows more than we do. Um, because that's what we do in our business is we outsource work to people that know what they're doing to expedite the process. Physical fitness trainers, which if you're out there and that's what you do, I love you. Keep going, keep motivating. But the price point sometimes for hiring an individual like this is just unrealistic for people that are thinking about their family budget, their household income. You know, they want their kids. There's a tension between like, I want my kids to play sports and to do things and we have to pay money for that versus like, yeah, I can kind of take care of myself, but I'm not going to go drop a couple hundred bucks a month paying for a personal fitness trainer. And so I think what Shred has been nice is regardless of where you train and why I'm so passionate about it, uh, if it's okay to mention on here, Charlie, but I have actually partnered with Shred um, because as I was thinking about brands that are near and dear to my heart that have brought real life change, it is very hard to champion something that you don't believe in. And I am both a blessing and a curse. I am a hundred percent no matter what. I love my wife more than anything. I love my kids more than anything. But that same passion and desire is what causes me when I'm not heading in the right direction to be going 100% and not being disciplined. And so I know that about myself. And sometimes I need those guardrails to keep me going. You will never have to guess as a listener of this show, as a friend of mine, how I feel or how I stand about something. I just, I go 100%. And so I think for so many people, they are looking for that spark to help them. And the neat thing is that through a partnership, by listening to the one big thing, or just by following my social media, uh, we'll put down in the show notes for you a way that you can get a discount on the Shred app. Um, So you can follow that link. It'll get you a discount code that you can use Uh, as a user of Shred. You can try the app out for free for a week. And then after that, get a discount by being a listener of the show. So you got nothing to lose if you want to try it. But because I have seen, and this has been my experience now in the gym, I have a handful of people that are now using the app and we can see the various workouts that we're all doing, which are all different. And I think that's what makes it really unique. And we're coming up and dapping and pounding each other. And it's like, Hey, what are you training today? And it's like, man, I got shoulders and X, Y, Z, or, you know, I'm doing chest. And all of a sudden, I think what I had back in school, what I had in college, you know, where everyone was doing the same thing on a timeline even though there's this virtual community, I've been able to kind of create because I've presented value to other people. Hey, this has changed my life. And I think that's maybe for us in our thirties and forties, uh, we're so desperate for authentic truth. We're really desperate for things that can really help us, uh, resources, life hacks. Some of my most, um, popular episodes I've ever had have been around health, eating, discipline, Uh, I had Netta Gorman, who is the host of the Life After Sugar podcast, who kind of gave a blueprint for kicking sugar out of your system. And there is no way that you as a parent or a spouse can be fully present, fully aware and giving the life that you have inside of you to those who need it if you don't love yourself and you're ashamed of what you see in the mirror. 
or you're ashamed of the things that you do when no one's watching. And I think for many of us, we can mask it through the successes that we have on social media and in the workplace. Uh, we can act like things are going well, but we know, man, we're not, we're not taking care of our bodies. Our nutrition is shot. The things that we're eating, we don't want to take our shirts off. We don't want to look right. We don't want to be out with our kids. And again, no one is going to know that, but I think it is this inner struggle that so many people deal with. And it's why I'm so passionate about it. You and I had kind of shared a little bit of our background story. I grew up a very chubby kid. And so I was the youngest of three sons uh, in the 90s. I don't know, man, inflation's insane today, but I felt like my mom was spending a couple hundred bucks feeding us three boys. We just ate. Like that was the thing that we kind of did as kids communally as a family is we ate and we played sports. And I didn't never realize that then growing up, how many of those habits that I developed around family and this idea of like, what makes me happy was food. When you're not training and taking care of yourself or you blow out your knees like you did or myself, when there's an element to your life that you can't have discipline in, boy, does it overflow into other areas of your life. And the next thing you know, you might be short with your kids or short with your spouse. And a lot of it tends from your health. So I just want to champion you, Charlie, and say kudos for seeing the need for something like this, taking the time to create something and then bring it to marketplace. But I know that if we just left here, this would be a great episode telling your story. And for those of Shred, they'll cheer you on. But I think that there's also some new things that you guys have been developing and evolving that I want to give you kind of space to talk about. So I know leading up to the show, you said maybe there were some new features. What are some things for those that are using Shred that can get them excited, but also for those that have never experienced it coming into it, what are some other things that they can be looking forward to? Yeah, you know, we, first of all, I love your commentary around the authentic relationships and the importance of them. And I want to stress how authentic our relationship is. And you truly fell in love with the product. We started talking. And and so that, that authentic relationship is not only important to us, but it's how we roll. We don't, we, we only like working and talking with people that are authentically understanding why what we're doing is different and important. And so appreciate your, your message there. Um. In terms of what's coming new, you know, our team cares so much. We wake up and 99% of our team is using the product on a daily basis. And we know through conversations with our customers, what do we not have, right? We always can be thankful for what we have. And we know that there's always room to, to improve. Steve, we're really excited that we're rolling out uh, custom equipment, which is something that we do to the depth of our system and the number of workouts that we have. We would um, make considerations for what equipment you have in your gym, and you could select certain alternates if you didn't have that. But now you'll be able to tell us what equipment you have in your gym or even match your gym to our database, and we'll sort it for you. And it'll auto-adjust your entire workouts to ensure it is tailor-made for your specific gym. So awesome. no more guessing, no more challenge. Uh, the app is great for a home gym. Uh, there's body weight components, but for those, but for those gyms in between that have kind of a, a mix and match assortment of things, we're going to be able to d d directly address that. And so that's a big thing that's coming out in the nearer term. And then as we look a little further out, we're looking at other components, right? I mean, fitness is obviously uh, where our core sits, but we've been hard at work thinking through how nutrition may play a role here how leveraging audio and making sure that there's a coach inside a, a voice component inside your ears as you're going and pointing out tips along the way. So there's a few other things that we're pretty excited about leaning into and working with customers to figure out if they're right. But the equipment is something that's coming in the next couple of weeks and we are thrilled. It's taken us uh, certainly a bit of time to get it right and we think everyone's going to enjoy it. Hey everyone, Steve Campbell. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Uh, if it's made an impact on you, I would love to take a moment to ask you to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. But I would also love for you to leave a five-star rating and review. Your ratings and review help other listeners know that this show is worth their time. So thank you so much for tuning in to The One Big Thing, and let's enjoy the rest of the episode. I love that. Who knew there was a mini Jarvis from Iron Man that's going to be in our ear talking to us the entire time. But that I could see the value of that as a user if you're on the road a lot, if you're in a hotel and you're in one yep. of those facilities where it's it's limited equipment. And I think that's what's neat is, you know, the hardest part is just getting to the gym. 
And so I just want to encourage and challenge you guys as listeners, whether you are the fittest you've ever been, or you're just being honest, like I'm, I'm not happy with where I'm at. Just acknowledge that, that it's okay to not be happy. Don't stay there. Don't be a victim, but realize that there's a path forward. And I think, I think what's so hard is again, why do we endlessly scroll our phones? Because it's an escape from the responsibilities that many of us have to shoulder and bear as parents and as spouses, that we will search our phone, whether we're on Amazon Marketplace, trying to buy something to fill a need, which there's probably people laughing because they recognize that's a real thing. Or again, our phones are like crazy at how much information is out there about our shopping patterns, what we're watching and how all these apps speak to each other. That it's, it's wild how many times my wife and I who's an absolute rock star, uh, when we talk and we'll mention about something we're trying to do. And the next thing we know, we'll look at our phone and there's like an advertisement for that thing. And it's almost like, God, I want to throw my phone away. But I think what's hard is, is you might be wanting change in your life, which you're acknowledging and I think is great. But then it's like, how do you make a decision? How do you make a choice? How do you take that first step? And for some people, I think they're trying to find the end all be all magic cure and it doesn't exist. And apps are, again, a blessing and a curse because apps, the idea of apps is to simplify your life and to make it easier. But if I think about how we used to travel in the 2000s, you would, you know, plot out where you were going to go. You'd go to MapQuest, if you guys remember what that was. You'd print out the nine pages of directions and you didn't need the last three. You'd get in your car. And our parents had this massive atlas when we were kids that was like 95 pages long, but we had MapQuest. Now, like, dude, I don't even think about driving. I just put into my Apple CarPlay where I want to go. I follow the blue line and off I go. It simplified my life, but it's mindless, right? I get to where I am and I didn't have to think about it. I think what's amazing about this app and Shred is that it's not mindless. It's, it's made it easier, but there's still an energy output that I have to put forth just without the fear, the shame, or the ability to have to think about what I'm doing. And I think what I love about it is if I can get to the gym, which is step number one, right? Or if you're at home, that's fine too. If you get into the app and there's suggestions there for you, that's like a great first step. But I have found that sometimes I'll click on a particular workout and then depending on the type, I'm like, dude, I'm not feeling that today. Whether it's like a lot of barbell stuff or dumbbell stuff or body weight. And what's neat is if I click over to one more style, it refreshes in a second and gives me a whole brand new curated workout. And so like, man, wouldn't we love to have that as dads and as husbands, like that type of blueprint for conversations, communication, authentic relationship, it doesn't exist. So I'm not saying that shred is like the first step to the new you, but I experienced it in my life. And so that's why I'm passionate about it because of the community and the benefits of it. And so you can take it with you and go, you know, where you want to go. But I think you've got these new features coming out. There's also, you know, from what I've seen, and I don't know if you want to talk about this too. I mean, I just simply follow kind of the curated workouts that Shred tells me to do. But within that are all these other programs that kind of model the P90X, you know, in a way. So is there anything you wanted to say? Because I'm sure there's Shred users that are listening to this that see those programs, but they just don't have the time to really look into them. Like how do the programs work and why is that something somebody might want to check out? Yeah, we have sort of two... Uh, pillars underneath our, our workout content. There's guided training, which has training styles. And mm-hmm. so that's more of the step-by-step approach. You're in a gym, you're going from one piece of equipment to another piece of equipment. And so we've designed that experience to be sort of most thoughtful and receptive to you walking through a big gym, small gym, medium gym, etc. And there's also programs, as you're mentioning them. And so they're more, uh, it's, a, it's a full end-to-end video, so longer form. And there's yoga, there's stretching, there is Tabata, some more high endurance, sort of like Orange Theory, if you if you know that mm-hmm. uh, brand, but kind of a yeah a, a, a higher end uh, video based experience. And so people mix and match these things; they'll just do one or the other. For me personally, I love doing the guided training, and then I'll throw two days of yoga in, either in the evenings um, if I can, if I have the time. Maybe I'll do just a long stretch after my workout. And so what we see users doing is either picking the program that they love best and just sticking with it or doing a little bit of mixing and matching to meet them 
in an area where they want to work on. And for me, that's flexibility. And, um, and, I, and I think this is kind of where we try to simplify things. We don't have 47 training styles. We have 14. And we think that's because we've identified the right 14 different ways to address the body. And then from there, you know, we have thousands of, of longer form class training programs that people love and enjoy. And, and Steve, you meant, I want to back up a step too. You mentioned something that sounds so simple to me. And I almost feel like, but I want to say it again. I go through rough patches where I'm not motivated. I don't have what it takes. I, I feel like I don't have it. I'm not getting up that morning with the same gusto. I'll, I'll let myself move through it. Um, I'll do my best to get up. But what I do to get myself back on track is lay out my clothes in the morning, or excuse me, in the evening, and just focus on getting to two weeks. Stop thinking about the future. Stop thinking about maybe the weight loss that I'm trying to achieve or something else. Can I show up for myself three times this week and three times next week, lay my clothes out, and if I start there, I, I reset my approach and I, find, I start to find my momentum again. Um, so I just I want to say that to anybody that's listening that may be having, they're either in a, a, a little bit of a, a moment where they're not feeling as motivated or they're just looking to take that first step. Feels simple. I have two ugly outfits that I wear to the gym. Nothing matches. I lay it out the night before. I, I wake up, we're good to go. And even if it's just 15 minute abs, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever I have, check the box, show up for yourself. And, um, and the content, as I was just mentioning, will meet you where you are in terms of what you're looking to do. And that's such a powerful statement, Charlie. And as the host of the show, I want to take a, a moment to even acknowledge and thank you for saying that, because I think it would be very easier for us as listeners to hear the CEO of a workout app to just say, every day's a great day. I'm always amped up. I'm using the app. I'm doing those things. And what I love about you know recording 30 plus episodes of interviews with individuals from all walks of life is how similar we all are as people. And I had one of my favorite musicians, uh, Stephen Day out of Nashville, somebody I'd listened to for years on Spotify, I still do. And like you said, we're all our own, you know, heroes or main characters of our own stories. Podcasting is this one unique platform where if I bumped into you in the street as the CEO in Los Angeles, you might give me two, three minutes, right, of talking because you're always on the go. Uh, same thing with me. If you caught me, I only got so much time because I'm probably chasing kids around. But podcasting is this unique platform where you get to engage with somebody half hour to an hour, tell their story, reminisce, and you don't realize the power of someone's story and how it can help somebody. And the reason I share that is because Steven shared how, you know, I think he's got anywhere from two to 10 million plus downloads on Spotify of his music. His fans adore him. But he had talked about how sometimes when he got done at the end of a night playing a show, he'd put the guitar down, just go and sit in his bus and just sit in silence. And he had worked so hard to get this thing only to have these unexpected emotions sometimes meet him in a place that he didn't expect to have. And I think it would be very easy for all of us to say, you invented this thing that's transforming people's lives. Surely you must also have that same energy. But the simple fact that you acknowledge that, man, sometimes you just don't feel it, but you still got to go. And you just gave some real simple life hacks. What are you doing intentionally to prepare you for the next moment? It could be as simple as laying your clothes out for the next day. You know, I'm an advocate for meal prepping. I've shared my story over these years, but my, my addiction, if you will, my crutch when I don't feel great about myself is food. It's just kind of how I grew up. And when I feel like I blew it as a dad or I'm stressed out or, you know, bills are stacking up or unseen things, I find that I tend to turn to food as a source of comfort to only in a weird, sickening way, feel awful about myself after I have the things that I so desperately tell myself I need. The only way for me to get out of that is to not tell myself like, I'm never going to eat that again. And I'm never going to have sugar. And I'm never going to do these things because you psych yourself out. I've learned that the secret to my life is meal prepping. And so I have to be intentional about what I go to the grocery store, which let me give a shameless plug for this company. They do not you know, allow sponsors or brand partners. I pray to God that I'm pronouncing it right. It's called Yucca. Have you ever used this app before? Heard of it. 
I have not used it, but I've definitely. It will it. change your life. Y U K A, Yucca. It's an app that you can download on Android or iPhone. And basically, what it allows you to do is go around grocery stores and, and scan barcodes. And it gives you, on a scale from zero to 100, a relative health score with no biases. I mean, their website says they don't accept money from donors, companies. They just want to basically hit you with the nutrition facts. So I think what's great about it is my wife and I, it was like a game. We'll go into a store and the products that we've been buying and giving to our kids and to our family for years. Now that we're scanning with our app, we're like, oh dear God, what is wrong with us? When you're seeing a score of like 30 out of a hundred. Why I'm saying that is because what I've learned with shred and it's the same thing with eating. I think we think we're doing the right things when we're getting certain food groups at the store to only find out that there are better things within those same food groups that we could be buying that would have less sodium, less sugar. And all of a sudden a light bulb goes off that there's always a better way to do things than how you are currently doing it. And if you have that moment in your life, I think that's what shred has become for me. I just through years of training know that I can go into the gym and basically make up you know, a workout within 60 minutes from just putting together all these different workouts I've done over the years. But I think what my experience has been with shred um, is, is I'm working out areas of my life that I've never really trained before. One, because I didn't either know how, didn't know where I would fit it into my workout. And I just didn't know what it would look like. And I could tell that I was a believer in the app itself. When one day uh, you and I had kind of talked about this a few weeks ago, it had asked me to do what are called diamond poles. And if you've never done those before, it is a shoulder exercise where you basically grab a rope and you pull it up over your head and your arms are in the shape of a diamond. And again, shred the app that kudos to you, you created, uh, will tell you like, Hey, we recommend this amount of weight for this many reps. And sometimes your ego, you know, gets the best you in your life. I'm not only doing 20 pounds, I'm going to put 40, 50 pounds on that sucker. And this was my first time doing it. And I put it on there and I did these diamond poles. And in the, in the moment, man, I'm cranking these things out and I'm like, yep, still got it. Uncle Rico, I'm feeling it. Charlie, the next day I could not move my arms. And I knew that it had worked because I had not had that experience in the gym in a long time because of that plateau that you had talked about. It was very rare that the next day I felt like I played a high school football game the day before. And so again, when I see people now that are in the gym and they're trying their best and they're working hard, we ask questions. I literally am the guy, I'm like, hey, what do you use to work out? And they're like, I use X, Y, Z. And I'm like, hey, for whatever it's worth, you might want to check out Shred. It is crazy how not indebted, that's way too strong of a word, but just like you're a go-to person now for that person. And when you come in the gym, they light up, they see you, they want to talk to you. And that has been my experience through podcasting, through my business, through my church, through my community life is to always give back more than I've ever received. And so if you ask me like, Steve, give me five life hacks that you have right now, I'd be like, absolutely, go use these. These will change your life. Be that for somebody else. And so I guess, you know, I want to be sensitive to our time together here today. Have there been along your journey, you know, from founder to CEO to entrepreneur, like what are the, the life lessons or big life lesson that you've learned that looking back now, like if you could tell a younger Charlie five, 10 years ago, what are the things that you've learned in this process, process that you're like, man, people need to know this. You know, what comes to mind when you ask that is a phrase, be your own best customer. And I think that there's a business lens for this and also a personal lens for this. So I'll start with the business lens and then I'll move to the personal. I think that how do you make something compelling? You find it, you want it to have differentiation in the market. And so one of the ways I think you can best differentiate someone, something is when you know it at an incredibly intimate level and you know it better than anybody else. And you can go to bat for it and you can dig in and you can listen, but also direct somebody if they're disagreeing. And I think that relationship with something can provide so much strength. And so if you're lucky enough to be your own best customer of something you create, I think you're going to have tons of success navigating that. You also could be your own best customer selling solar, selling, you know, involved in other kinds of business and thinking about, well, what, what would the customer that I'm speaking to want to see? And how do I sort of put my shoes in that place? So you think you can become your own best customer if you think enough about it and really, you know, 
take a look at the fundamentals of, of why you're having certain kinds of conversations, but also at a personal level. Like, how do you want to show up as a dad? How do you want to show up when you walk into a room? What do you want people to think? How do you want to be perceived? How does your personal brand come off? And what are the kinds of things you need to do to reflect that change or that uh, experience in others in the way that they take a look at you? And I think, you know, taking a look and doing an assessment, a thoughtful assessment, you need to be 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 good to yourself in these conversations, but think, you know, how how can I show up better? How do I show up a little bit more um, with a little bit more tact or a little less this and a little bit more that? And I think it's good to be assessing yourself both through a business lens in that way and in a personal lens that way. Coming back to my first statement, this is the athlete coming out of me. I think I can always be doing a little bit better. And I don't mean that I think you can pick and choose the right words and how to say that, but I think you can always improve. And so, yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's being your own best customer um, at both a business level and a personal level and finding the right ways to talk to yourself in yep. both of those scenarios. And how do you really drive change? And I think that's, that's a, an area that I uh, have found to be impactful spending time. on. Well, it sounds like you're a very self-reflective person, which is pretty similar to how I am. Um, I don't typically need people to point something out of my life and say like, Steve, you should really pay attention to that. I, I'm just self-aware that when a conversation didn't go right, when I didn't parent correctly, when I dropped the ball with my wife, um, you, you get two choices. You can either just act like it wasn't your fault and brush everything off and be angry at the world and, and always expect the other people around you to change colleagues, spouses, kids, or be honest, like you're not going to be able to change your life today to tomorrow. But I'm sure if you reflect a little bit, whether it's meditation, whether it's journaling, which I'm a huge proponent for journaling, reflecting on your thoughts. I spend time after the gym every morning for about a half hour, cup of coffee. I mean, that's when I have time and I, and I pray and I just think about things. It's crazy how like I'll think about my own life and like, man, what are the areas that I just want to improve in? And when you'll create the space to be able to do that and then really jot down whatever comes to mind, I would challenge all of you as a listener to this episode today, whether you're aware of Shred or not, take self-inventory. Think about the areas of your life, the roles that you play right now, the hats that you wear, whether you're married, whether you're a parent, whether you're running a company, whether you're working under somebody, you could be an intern. It doesn't matter. Think about all those roles and write those roles down on a piece of paper and just begin to be honest and assess like, how are you doing in each one of those areas? And then like, what, what would you change? What one thing would you change about that, that, that could help you and not going so extreme that like, I want to lose all this weight or I want to do this, but like, what's one thing that you would introduce in this area of your life? And I think that's why I'm on this journey of presenting through podcasting ways that we could be our most authentic self to be fully present, to not always have all the answers, but at least have enough resources that can point us in the right direction and maybe have blueprints for how to be the best parents, how to be the best spouse, because we're all wired differently. Our DNA is all differently. Our brains all think differently. We all have different love languages and ways that we respond to things. So it's like, man, how can people, when they listen to this show, take one thing, which in this case, it's very specific through the Shred app, but how can they take one thing away from Charlie's story that can help them? And so I think you've done an incredible job of explaining kind of the genesis of Shred, sharing with your listeners the benefits of it, but also maybe the new features that are coming out. Was there anything else that we didn't talk about today that you think would be good before we bring this one to a close? No, I just want to say that we, there's a lot of fitness apps out there. There's a lot of junk. I pride ourselves that we own 47 minutes on average of people's day. We take that to heart. Our team is extremely passionate about that 47 minutes that we get to hold. And just reach out if you have any questions, reach out to Steve, reach out to me. But there is a, a very passionate group of people that sits behind this product and brings it to life every day. So I just, I think sometimes you can get a little lost in the tech minutia of the world. And there is a, a really proud group of people that wakes up every day thinking about how to deliver the most impactful experience to you through fitness. So 
No, Steve, thank you for this. And that's probably the last thing I want to make sure I say out loud. I've got a great team. Well, well, hey, I that was going to be my last point for you as I've had the honor and privilege of interacting through kind of our, our exploratory partnership, some of your team members, and every single person, Ryan, down to the other staff members that I've met have been um, nothing but gracious, kind, and genuine. And so, you know, I, I don't have this feeling that you're the CEO that has made it all about you and the people behind you suffer. I would imagine from the time that we spent together and what I have uh, heard from you today that you are somebody that through your own setbacks, through your own situations, you know, realizes that you want to make an impact on other people. And you've probably surrounded yourself with individuals that can help build the thing that you are so passionate about. And that is my last kind of like leaving thought with all of you guys. Charlie, you had talked about like, be the kind of consumer, the customer that like you, you want to be. And I think, I think for all of us today, like be the spouse that you should be, be the parent that you should be. It doesn't always mean that you're going to get it right. And I think if I've made any error in my life or dropped the ball, there was a season of my life where I was too concerned with what people outside of my immediate family thought about the brands that I was building, about the podcasting that I was doing that I had, you know, my wife that was trying to talk to me about weekend plans or what was coming up. And it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if a client reached out to me, if a prospective client reached out, I would drop everything and go. And it was probably a few years ago that I just had this realization of like, Steve, you are missing it. Like none of this matters. What you're building does not matter if you lose the people that are, are needing you the most. And so I just want to leave all of you guys as a listener of this show, that if there's been some things that you've blown in your physical, your mental, your financial, your spiritual life, you still got time. You still got time. Go find the resources that can help you. Admit where you've dropped the ball, but now let's make a plan to make you the best self you can be because there's a lot of people that are going to need the things that you're going to learn along the way that only setback, trial, and failure are going to teach you. So Charlie Hale, thank you for being a guest on the One Big Thing podcast. We will make sure that we put information in the show notes about how people can get in touch with the app, but also if there's any contact information uh, for people that want to get in touch and to all the users of Shred, I hope this has been a great experience for you on the One Big Thing and you'll check out some other episodes. Uh, but Charlie, thanks for uh, coming on the show and sharing your story today. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Absolutely.